What is going on world? Welcome back once again. My name is Zach Novak and this is Zach Novak Plays Games. In today's video, we've got this week at Bungie. A bunch of information dropped earlier this morning. So let's roll the intros, let's get into it, and I do hope you enjoy. Alrighty, so starting things out, Bungie does have to state that they know the score. Now what has actually happened with that said score is the banners are flying in the tower. They actually tell the truth that pretty much everyone has really known for quite some time. Dead Orbit just so happens to be the number one faction that rules the hearts of almost all Guardians, I myself included. Do they all think that they look better in black? Or are they all just generally a moody bunch? Well, I have to say we are kind of a little bit of both. Mixed bag of happy, sad, angry, whatever else, black, blue, white, and gray. Everything in between. It's pretty freaking cool. We have to say that we never actually thought that we would kind of come into this set of I guess victories, which is pretty freaking cool, but Bungie does have to state that they know the motives that were truly set behind all of us wild guardians that actually went out to express our loyalty through said actions were grand and grandular, both big and small, everyone had to play their part. Now they do state that there certainly was a, uh, a certain, I guess, heir to Arak Jalalalalalalalao, where the actual champion himself was the first champion of the first faction rally in history. His victory in itself was not undisputed. Each of the factions did put in their representative and respectful points in every part of the board. There was over 61 million reward packages given out and holy Jesus, that is a hell of a lot. Dead Orbit did actually manage to emerge, coming victorious with the most profitable faction by a grand margin of 2 million. That is crazy, that is really freaking cool. And something that I myself definitely did not see coming was New Monarchy was actually in second. Future War Cult coming in as a close third. Jeez, like what? New Monarchy, one that just wasn't really talked about. Everyone was like, Future War Call has the best weapons. And everyone's else was like, Dead Orbit has like the best everything else. And I was just like, it's Dead Orbit. The guy that plays him, this guy right here. As you can see, yeah, they don't really look the same. But I will say, this guy is pretty freaking cool. I like him in, in absolutely everything he plays. It's just perfect. It's it's really freaking cool. But they do state that as promised, Dead Orbit did have a prize on offer. If you, like myself, pledge to them, it'll be definitely a grandular steal. If you did not, however, then Aralak Alajala Alao is gonna steal from you. He's gonna be teaching you your potential downfall with the treachery of joining other different factions. Join him next time, if you will. The faction rally will return. New Monarchy and Future World Cup will have their chance to actually try once again, try to get the revenge. However, next week, coming into the tower, the space that we have available for a new guest is being rolled out. The red carpet is being laid and the return of the one, the only, Iron Salad Band, Band, Face, Guy, yeah, Lord Salad Fingers. He's coming back. Holy Jesus. I am like actually really hyped on this. Iron Banner is something I have loved since like it first was really introduced in Destiny 1. They do state that the Red War scattered the heroes of humanity across the entire solar system one by one. However, they have been returning to the lost city. Now, Lord Saladin will hold his court and reward the brave guardian and guardian ears. That was a dog barking. Sorry about that. Anyway, it is the Iron Banner. It begins October 10th at 2 a.m. Pacific. It ends at October 17th, 2 a.m. Pacific. The game this time is Control. Thank God! I've had too much supremacy in the last probably three days, four days, five days, weeks, actually, with the Crucible at the moment. 
it has been a very pittance of uh, control games that I have seen so far, but from the games I have played, I have just fallen in love with Crucible once again, and Crucible with Iron Banner is going to be amazing. Now, they do actually have to state that the first faction rally does come to an entire end and a grinding halt with the Iron Lords in themselves standing there ready to actually, you know, run out the next ritual for any willing participants. The special event has actually undergone some certain changes. The Iron Banner is still your one and only chance to try and stand and be proven in the fires of friendly competition. Prove that you are the greatest out there alive. Or just the greatest that can kind of help out your team. One thing that is different, two things that is different, and a three things that is different. Combat will actually be between two teams of four players. Your fighting abilities and not your player levels will actually decide the outcome of said matches. And bounties and ranks have been replaced with an Iron Banner Engram. I'm not sure whether that's just one Iron Banner Engram or if it's three Iron Banner Engrams, one for each character, we'll have to see. But they do go on to actually say, how can we compete? Well, complete the actual Destiny 2 campaign. The only way to reach the actual tower at the moment is by doing so. So yeah, do that and get it done. You can then visit Lord Salad Finger Salad Man, that salad face up in the tower to begin the Iron Banner quest when it actually becomes available. And then you can also fight in the Iron Banner playlist with quick play modes, with matchmaking, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I myself am really, really hyped for this. Now, if that does not actually get you hyped, then, well, let me get you hyped with this. What is in it for you guys? You earn Iron Banner tokens. Oh my God, yes. Who doesn't love tokens? That means more loot if you actually, you know, wanna get it. There is daily and season milestones that'll track your progress to glory in the sweet, sweet halls of the Iron Lords. And finally, you can claim brand new armor wrought in the wraths and forged in the fire and flames of the Iron Lords. And here is said armors, as we can see, they actually look pretty freaking cool. Warlock and Titan definitely looking almost samurai viking-ish. Kind of combine them together. They look pretty freaking cool. Definitely have that kind of Iron Lord feel. As you can see the wolf on the, uh, you know, Titan and little fur on all three characters. As well as that Huntress looking goddamn sexy. However, I was really hoping that we would get, I don't know, an Iron Banner cloak that didn't have a hood. Potentially we may actually see that. We'll have to actually see when we do see what's actually available to be seen. Decorate yourself as a master of the competitive spirit. Form up in a fire team or be a lone wolf and let the fates choose your teammates. Pretty cool. I'm hyped. That's cool. But that's not the coolest thing, one of the coolest things, and if not the coolest thing that we have in this entire TWAB is Stop doing that. You know, we're not Rocky, but again, we are someone who is standing up against one of, if not the greatest foes in the galaxy. Combat against other guardians, not your thing. The ultimate PvE challenge also arrives in the director on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. The morning after the weekly reset begins a new invitation from Emperor Kallus to our loyal guardians to join him for the prestige raid. Which I think will be pretty freaking cool. There are a few changes, but they do state they don't expect everyone to be successful in actually completing this activity. There is a few mechanical changes and few encounters that are a little bit different, but uh, yeah, not too much have actually been changed. They are there, there are changes, and there are new loots coming. The prestige raid is about mastering a more punishing sandbox. Bungie's goal is not to provide a boon to your character's progression, but there are unique rewards to help you shine nonetheless. Consider this your invitation to prove to the world that you are among the very best of the raiders who overlook this shining city. World first will be counted. Bungie will actually tell you no more secrets and no more spoilers. Good luck to all you guardians that are trying it. 
I myself have not even tried the normal raid, so yeah, probably a few weeks until I try this thing out. And finally, Bungie has their stage, their story, and you know what? They're going to be telling it. This is where the word season that we talked about earlier before, you know, that thing about Iron Banner where it said seasons. Yeah. Now, we do know that there is actually a slight mention of what seasons are in your clan. However, there really isn't an actual detailed look at it. Bungie's actually going to go over this and cover all of it in the blog what does that actually mean? Well, they'll be answering questions, and a bunch of questions, and then a bunch more questions, and then if we're lucky, even more questions after that. They're going to be going to the one, the only, TwitchCon. Something that I myself am definitely not even going to ever even get a chance to go to this year. Again, I am a, a broke Australian YouTuber. One of these days, in the future, I shall definitely be going to this, and uh, yeah, um... Let's just leave it at that. Anyway, they do go on to state that the panel in itself is going to be discussing the Seasons of Destiny. When is this panel? It is going to be Friday, October at 4.30pm Pacific. If you guys want to go and check it out, you can check it out at the Cool Cat Theatre, as well as on the Cool Cat channel. They do state, what do seasons mean in Destiny 2? What will change from season to season? How many seasons can we expect? And when does season 2 begin? Well, the season in itself will be streamed and they do actually mean it will be streamed because it is TwitchCon so everyone can actually tune in and see what is planned with the upcoming Destiny community and what is engaged when it comes to the pile of, you know, vast information. We still don't know about Destiny 2. We have it, we are playing it, and every day we're discovering new secrets and new little tidbits of information. But until we have the entire storyline laid out like it is a book like the Book of Sorrows, and until the future, this is going to be the end of this week at Bungie. They do quickly go on to say that there is the actual Destiny Hotfix 1.0.3.1, which was actually conducted to support the deployment of Hotfix 1.0.3.1 to Destiny 2. Upon conclusion, there was a minor issue where some players signed in and were prompted with create new characters in an alternate service environment. No characters or items were deleted during this time, but there was that certain issue for the result and actual resolution that people had to go to. They closed Destiny 2, relaunched the application, and things had returned. Small, minor problem, but those are just the things that happen with new games that are changing. They do also state that event vendors have an availability issue. When the actual faction rally went live, there was a problem with the vendors and people had to pretty much return to the character selection screen and then reselect their character. Then they could go back to the tower and, you know, it was fixed. Most likely, this will happen again with Iron Banner. When Lord Saladin does actually arrive, most likely you guys will have to either quit Destiny 2 or just re-log into your character to be able to see it. Pretty easy. And error codes. Finally, the error codes that have been actually plaguing so many people. Cabbage, Rabbit, Guitar, Pixie, Onyx, probably a bunch of other names. They're blocking quite a few people from actually accessing Destiny 2's campaign, completing it, or just certain things in the game. There are always going to be issues like this ongoing in the future, but Bungie is definitely looking into it every day. Everything that is possible they are doing to try to fix this and counteract these problems. Don't go heading on Bungie. If you do have a problem, go and hit up the hashtag help forum on the Bungie website. Let them know the information. Were you in a fight scene when this happened? What was the activity you were doing and why were you engaged in it when you were expecting this error? And how have you followed these steps within the network troubleshooting guide to ensure proper network configuration in Destiny 2 gameplay? There is a bunch of information in there and a bunch of stuff that can actually help you guys out. But until next time, this has been Zach Novak. This has been This Week at Bungie. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. And until next time, I'll have a lit video. Actually, maybe a little bit later tonight because I've got Zor's video coming out in probably a few hours. But until then, this has been Zach Novak. Do all that good stuff down below. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave us. Leave whatever you will. Share this video around because, you know, some people actually do need to know this information. And even if you don't share it around, then just, you know, use word of mouth and tell your friends. Pretty cool. That's pretty much it. Hopefully, once again, you have enjoyed this video. Do all that good stuff, and I'll be cheering like Kieran if he was Ed Sheeran. But until next time, this is Zach Novak, signing off. Peace out.